This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. I'm Roby Brock. It is Tuesday, September 6th. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. Here are today's top stories. The U.S. Census Bureau has released its inaugural survey of entrepreneurs, highlighting that nearly one in ten businesses with employees on the payroll have been in business less than two years. Those statistics support state numbers that show many of the 42,000 jobs that have been added to Arkansas's economy have come from the professional and business services super sector. A new demographics analysis from Chamber Leads and the Conway Area Chamber of Commerce shows that the 2016 presidential primary election cycle brought first-time voters who were older, more educated, more affluent, and wider than average first-time voters. The breakdown surveys about 190,000 voters in Pulaski, Benton, Craighead, and Sebastian counties. You can check out the full story at talkbusiness.net. And if you missed it over the weekend, legendary philanthropist Pat Walker passed away at the age of 97. She gave to more charitable organizations than you can count, but some highlights include UAMS, the University of Arkansas, the University of the Ozarks, Washington Regional Medical Center, and Arkansas Children's Hospital. Pat Walker and her husband Willard were among the early investors in a little retail chain you may have heard of called Walmart. And those are your top stories of the day. You can keep up with these stories and more on our website at talkbusiness.net. More to come, including a look at the highlights and lowlights of the latest state revenue report. We'll tell you more about what to expect with our new partnership with the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal. And later, State Representative Andy Davis and Jessica deloach Saban discuss and debate the latest headlines from the presidential campaign trail. We're back after this. First Security is here, only here. So that means we're here, here, and here. Even here, and definitely here. Because here is where we want to be for you. First Security Bank, only in Arkansas. At Deltic Timber Corporation, we believe in the responsible creation of communities, in the development of neighborhoods that bring convenience and comfort to life, while respecting the beauty and delicacy of nature, like the harmonious balance of environment and expansion found in the thriving communities of Chenal Valley and Chenal Downs in Little Rock and Red Oak Ridge in Hot Springs, because the best communities in the natural state are the ones that help keep it that way. On Friday, the state of Arkansas released its monthly state revenue report, a good barometer of what's happening in the state's economy on wages, consumer spending, business health, and much more. The numbers, however, not so rosy. Two months into the state's new fiscal year, year-to-date net revenues totaled $816.8 million, about a half a percent below a year ago and 1.8 percent below forecast. Lower individual income taxes, lower sales and use taxes, and lower corporate income taxes were to blame. All three of those large categories came in below last year's levels and below expectations. However, we're just two months into the new fiscal year, certainly no time to panic, and plenty of time to see if these are just seasonal mood swings that might swing the other way in another month or two. A quick break, and we're back with a look at our pending merger with the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal, plus Representative Andy Davis and Talk Business and Politics contributor Jessica deloach Saban. We'll discuss presidential scandals that aren't being widely reported, according to supporters of the other candidates. More po Talk Politics right after this. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Oh, I love you too, Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me. As Arkansas's population grows, so do our energy demands. But with the right mix of resources, reliable, affordable power will always be a reality. These resources are all around us in our rivers, blowing through our trees, even right below our feet. 
the answer isn't focusing on one resource, it's embracing them all. The electric cooperatives of Arkansas know that a balanced approach to power builds our communities and powers our dreams. Visit themixmatters.com and see why there's power in knowledge. Well, last week, Talk Business and Politics announced that it will acquire the Northwest Arkansas Business Journal. Actually, our parent company announced we buy out and merge with their parent company. The end result, we will soon be offering much more news in Northwest Arkansas. We will be exporting much more news out of Northwest Arkansas to the rest of the state, and we will be importing much more news into Northwest Arkansas from the rest of the state. All of that is good for you because the resources we're adding with the journal will allow us to do more in all regions of the state as we grow as a media organization. So stay tuned because we plan to roll out new products and services for receiving our news in Northwest Arkansas and in other markets across the state as a result of the deal. I'd love to know what you think and what you would like to see. If you'll drop me an email at roby at talkbusiness.net and share your thoughts, it would be appreciated. The idea line... It is open. A quick break and still to come, Representative Andy Davis and Talk Business and Politics contributor Jessica Deloach Saban discuss and debate headlines from the presidential campaign trail. There's more right after this. Circuits turn on the lights by making a connection, by closing the loop. At Entergy, we believe our economy is circular too. What you put in comes back. So we invest billions in new infrastructure, which helps attract new industry, which helps create new jobs. We partner with local communities to electrify the economy. And together, we power life. Entergy. You've likely heard of the Great Arkansas Treasure Hunt. In fact, you or your business may have property to claim in the hunt. But where does this treasure come from? Businesses like yours. The law calls it unclaimed property. If your business is holding money on its books that you've not been able to return to the owner, it's most likely unclaimed property and the law requires it to be sent to the state auditor's office each year. Auditor Andrea Lee's office can make the process for businesses to comply with the law easy and straightforward. Help us help you return Arkansans unclaimed property at auditor.ar.gov. Representative Andy Davis is a Republican from Little Rock. Jessica Deloach Saban is our resident Democrat on the Talk Business and Politics website. They are both here to play a little game that we like to call the presidential headlines. Did you like that introduction to you? I loved it. Yeah, did you like that introduction to you? It works. Yeah, it worked. That's right. You've been jet set and flying around the globe, haven't you? I we have. appreciate you coming back and doing a stint with us. Where have you no been problem. exotic lately? Andy? Uh, I mean, Arch you haven't <laughs> been to Eastern Europe or any place like Jessica. No, no. Arch Street, West Little Rock. Yeah. 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 Work in the district. Saline Working County. The district. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. You're at the Salt Bowl. Salt Bowl, absolutely. Comparable, nice. I think. Very similar to Austria. Yes. <laughs> let, let's talk about. Let's talk about some things that are uh, in the headlines, but they're not in the headlines. And I want you all to tell me why they're not in the headlines. We uh, see a lot of focus on Hillary Clinton not holding a press conference, of which she actually kind of had a little mini impromptu press conference here. But this seems to be something that has drawn a little bit of a drumbeat. Donald Trump, of all the scandals of Hillary Clinton's kind of pay-to-play alleged uh, activity, Donald Trump actually has a scandal out there that could qualify as well. Why are we only seeing certain things being reported as scandals in the media, Andy? Well, um, I think one of the biggest reasons is, uh, I, I think it's different for each candidate, let, let me say that. So for Trump, I think that he's such not a establishment candidate that his voters perceive him as just doing what the establishment people are already doing. They assume that these you know, pay for play, quid pro quo things are going on all the time anyway. So if you were to report on something that Trump did, it's just, okay, well, everybody else is doing it. It also, I think this one in particular that we're talking about in Florida, I think almost is a parallel with uh, the criticism of scandals in the Clinton Foundation. And so how much does media want to bring that up if it's just going to run a parallel to that? For Hillary, I, I think... Um, the fact that she hasn't had a press conference and why don't we hear more about that? I almost wonder if the press don't highlight it more because it, it, it shows... It's kind of ticked them off. <laughs> it has ticked them off, but if they talk about it too much, they're admitting what some of the Democrat strategists have said, which is we campaign differently now. Yeah. And we campaign through social media and we can control our message better 
through other means than we can through a press conference. Well, okay. Uh, your take on just kind of the largeness of the, we're going to talk about each of these different sure. uh, particular things uh, individually, but why do you think that uh, the press handles these two different candidates kind of with some differences? Well, I think that when you start talking about um, scandals, right, the, the conspiracy theorists could argue, oh, there's a tit for tat situation going on here where you hear the Clinton Foundation coming up over and over again about impropriety or potential impropriety and, oh, um, how are they spending their money and who has access to the Clintons? And then all of a sudden there's a scandal that surfaces from the Trump can or about Donald Trump and his charitable foundation, right? So I think every time you have a scandal, especially when you're this far along in a campaign cycle, you're going to end up where it's like tit for tat. Like, here's your scandal this week. Oh, well, you're looking at me. Look over here at this guy. And oh, look back at her. There's a lot of that that goes on in presidential campaigns. So everything we're talking about now, just wait next week and the week after that. There could be brand new scandals. So um, also, too, when you start going down this road, it gets kind of murky and you have to find that balance in the media too, where people still have the issues that they want to talk about. This is kind of more just the flavor, the kind of fun, gossipy stuff. But if it uh, came to be that some of these allegations are true of wrongdoing, that could actually shift numbers in these campaigns. So it's kind of fun to watch. So it's it's kind of um, opposition research 101 too. I think yeah. some of the stuff's coming out, the homework's done. It's it's a little bit, you got all the cooking ingredients to make some of this stuff go as well. All right, let's take a couple of these different uh, things that are being talked about about, about both candidates independently. Let's, let's talk about Hillary Clinton. Lots of pressure for her to have a press conference. Uh, one of the headlines here that we looked at is uh, that uh, Clint, Hillary Clinton mounting pressure for a press conference. Is the, is the mass press conference dead? Is it what you suggested earlier, Andy, that we, they don't need to have press conferences anymore? I mean, I don't know. It, 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 it could be. I mean, you can certainly make the case that the mass press conference is dead with, with the advent of social media, and like I said earlier, all the ways a, can, a campaign can push their message without traditional press conferences and without those questions. You know, you think about even debates today appear to be very kind of formulated and everything's negotiated beforehand. Candidates know what to expect. And the press conference is kind of the last place where they can go in and get, you know, blindsided by that unexpected question. So, you know, I can understand why they're, maybe she's trying to shy away from that, but, you know, is it dead? I, I don't know. I, I don't really want it to be dead because I, I think that candidates should have to be confronted with those unexpected questions. I think that's when you get uh, a more fair and realistic picture of a candidate and what they think when they have to think on their toes like that. I can't wait for your next press conference, buddy. I can't <laughs> wait. So. A lot of demand for those. What do you think, race? Jessica? She's done a lot of sure. interviews. She's done like 350 interviews. She's done a lot one of interviews. One-on-one with a lot of media. It would be hard-pressed for me to say that there hasn't been some question that she should answer that she hasn't. Sure. Well, I think a lot of the time when you hear people complaining about her not having a press conference, you have to ask yourself, okay, if she had one right now, would you care? Would you tune in? I mean, what's so funny is that now that she's inching more toward this press conference mode, it wouldn't take much to have the media just to cut away as soon as she started. It's just something to complain about. That said, people, they appreciate transparency and they look at press conferences and they equate those two things, that you're willing to stand before us and take whatever question is thrown your way. Knowing that the media really is interested in blindsiding uh, politicians very often in press conferences, I think it's inevitable that she will have to participate in them. You've got debates coming up. There will be follow-up to some of the things that are said in these debates. So press conferences aren't dead, but I do think the issue is a little overblown. All right. I'm going to advocate right now with the two of you and everybody that's going to watch this. We need prime minister's questions. That's what we need <laughs> in America uh, twice a week. Sure. Combative style there. All right. Another would-be scandal here. This has gotten not a lot of press attention, but uh, Donald Trump made a contribution through his charitable foundation to the uh, Florida Attorney General, and all of a sudden, magically, some investigation of Trump University goes away. Um, is this a quid pro quo situation? Because this is what Hillary Clinton's getting hammered about with her connections and her access Right. Uh, through State Department and the Clinton Foundation. Well, and if that criticism is good for her, then it's certainly good for him. I think what's alarming about this is uh, it's the fact that the, the listing of that contribution wasn't named properly. And it, it was named in such a way that would make one think that it was almost intentional, uh, an attempt to try to cover that money trail up. It wasn't very smart. And it also puts the uh, foundation at risk because why not audit it? You don't know who you've given $25,000 to and it's listed improperly. I would be digging in on that. 
The fact that the IRS fined him $2,500, uh, $2, I think that says something. It says, hey, we don't think that what you did was right and we're looking at you. Um, you know, who's to say whether or not that contribution in 2013 is what changed the Attorney General's mind? Because if it is the case that it stands that that the state of Florida wouldn't have had to engage because of what was going on through New York's judicial system, if it would have um, covered the entire nation and all of those right. aggrieved customers, then that's fine, but still it looks bad. And perception in politics is really everything. If you took out the name Trump and put the word Clinton in there, would this be a scandal of a different proportion? <laughs> I don't know. I, I go back to what I said earlier. You know, I, I think for the the general public, and I think when you're talking about Trump, you have to remember you're not thinking about people like us that talk about politics day in, day out. You think, you're talking about people that are at work all day, they're not thinking about this, and they see Trump as just a regular guy like them. So a regular the, the, billionaire the, like the, Bill. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a $2,500 fine, but the fine wasn't because there's impropriety there. The fine was because they wrote the check from the wrong entity. And so, you know, Trump has, has repaid the charitable organization for that fee, uh, the contribution. So, uh, you know, even the author says there's no investigation. Nobody's you know, really looked into this. It's just the perception of things, like you said. Yeah. So, but that's the case for so many candidates that I think that those average voters look at it and they go, well, isn't everybody doing that anyway? I mean, is this really any different than what <laughs> Hillary has done or what Obama's done or what, you know, pick, pick a guy, right. you know, what anybody else is doing in D.C. Right. And it's worth noting that uh, charitable organizations are not supposed to be engaging with elected officials. You don't cross those lines and so the entity that filed the initial, the, the case, the complaint, they're the ones that had uncovered it and they even went on record to say we're seeing a lot more of this and those lines need to be respected. There's a reason yeah. why they exist and how does your foundation not know that one rule and why is it that you gave $25,000 to the Attorney General's uh, political organization in, I mean, of a state where you actually might be under some some legal fire. It's right. just, it just looks bad. Any more transparency and all this financial giving. You're going to sponsor <laughs> the bill this next session, right? Right? Uh, wrong state. Wrong right. state. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. All right. All right. Representative Andy Davis, Jessica Bellup, Saban, thank y'all for being here. We're going to do another round tomorrow with you guys, so stick yes. around, okay? Yeah. All right. That's all for today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. We will see you tomorrow. I'm Roby Brock. Take care.